Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing another deep dive deck here. I actually haven't done one of these in a bit. I used to do them once a week. That's a lot of work. So I ended up doing, I'm alternating with my deck check-in, which is where I review decks and make suggestions for them and doing this. So yeah, I actually haven't done one of these in three weeks now, which is quite a stretch for me to, but anyway, you don't need to know all of that. So yeah, we'll just get right into it. Agnes, the Dragon's Lash is this one. So we've got one black or red and a red or and a red or a green. So he's a haste 3-3. Three, three. Haste is very important with this guy. Whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, you create a tap treasure token. Oh boy. Haste especially, basing something off of haste, I really love. Because usually haste is like it's great, you know, the first round, and then it doesn't matter. This is just like, haste keeps like, giving, giving, giving. Um, it's a great little mechanic to base it off of. And yeah, I've decided to try and do a deck on every color identity in the game. So between my deck reviews and this uh, making budget decks. Alright, so I've actually co covered a large number already. Yeah. I'm almost finished. I thought I would have to do a whole bunch to be able to like complete it, and I actually sat down and noted everything that I had done. I've got, well, I've got all the dual colors done. I think I have, uh, I've got white and black done. I need the three base colors. I need a few of the three color combinations, and then all of the four, and I did a Wooberg already with my Tazri deck, so yeah. Five is covered already. So this is going to be my John Commander. Um, I'm going to try and have my website up soon, and um, where you're going to be able to see that all listed out that way. Once again, Agnes the Dragon Slash. So he is a very interesting commander. Jund is possibly the most aggressive tricolor combination. It is. It's Gruul plus Black, right? Gruul is already extremely aggressive. Frankly, Rakdos is extremely aggressive, and it's both of those. Cool boy. So this is a very good commander because you want to just keep attacking. Um, I would say Mardu is highly aggressive. This is even more aggressive than Mardu. Uh, Mardu is still probably my favorite, but this is a... Uh, if you're looking for aggression level, this is probably where to go. Anyway, so he is all about attacking fast with a haste and making lots of treasure to ramp for the win. Um, remember, the treasure comes in tapped, right? It does come in tapped, so you're going to need to wait a turn. It's not you can immediately turn around and make use of that. You do have to wait until your next untapped phase, unfortunately. So there is a little bit of a hold up there, but you can still take off pretty hard with this. And yeah, I fo focus primarily on the treasure theme in this deck. I actually did uh, the treasure top treasure commanders on EDH Rack, I think it was two weeks ago. So I'll try to put a link up there. And yeah, if you want to check that out, you can check it out. Very strong strategy. Basically making a whole bunch of like easy extra mana is uh, is quite powerful, obviously. Uh. So, uh, <clears throat> it's a very interesting casting cost for a commander. So he can be cast using only red mana, even though he is a tricolor. So again, he's one black or red and red and red or black or green. So you could cast him for one red, 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 or even just four red, right? You could cast him for all red. So this is very unusual for a tricolor commander that kind of you don't have to worry about mana fixing as much. There's definitely a major emphasis on red in this deck because the commander really, if you if you get your red covered, you're probably most of the way there with this deck. Um, yeah, even he well he makes treasure also, so you kind of don't care as well. But anyway. Yeah, this is a very easy to cast. 4 CMC is kind of the only thing that matters, and red. Alright, so looking at the themes and uh, sub-themes here, we've got Haste Typo. I'm sure there's a correct way to say that. I'm just calling it Haste Typo. I'm not sure exactly what you're supposed to say for that for a mechanic when it, a deck is based around a mechanic. Is it still called Typo? I, I, it seems like something I should know, but I don't. Maybe someone could tell me. Sub-themes? So we've got treasure. 
Calling treasure a sub-theme is almost not true in this deck where it's like so fundamental. Like it is mostly haste, but the haste makes the treasure. So the two things are kind of like directly synergized. Uh, artifact entering, artifact sack, artifacts too damaged. So, you know, we kind of care about artifacts with this deck. Making all those treasures, remember every treasure is a token artifact. It counts as an artifact, just like any others. And X spells. X spells are very important because we don't want to get, if someone's going to suddenly like play some kind of sorcery board wipe that's going to destroy all of our treasure, you want to get something for it. These X spells, I believe I have six of them in the deck. Just keep one on hand if you're either going to knock someone out of the game with it, you can, or you can just get a huge advantage with it, or yeah, if you need it, if someone's about to destroy all your treasures, cast that. A lot of them aren't instants. I think most of them are instants, so you can cast it and just be, hey, good to go. Kind of punish them for uh, trying to take out your treasures, basically. Deck price is 29.17, so I'm keeping this one under 30 bucks, which is not easy, but I managed to do it. All right, max the design objective is to maximize creature with haste and benefits from treasures. Again, very much the dual kind of themes there. Kind of working as one theme, but this is determined using the TCG player market price, not a sponsor. I remember to say it that time. Haha. -ha. Anyway, you can check the deck on moxfield.com. I'm going to post the deck in the description. You can check it on moxfield.com. There, it will allow you to order it. Again, you can use TCG player or Card Kingdom. Card Kingdom costs a little bit more, but it's a uh, seems like less hassle. Someone said TCG player, the sh shipping price was really high, and then someone else said that it's a lot lower if you, like, limit the number of vendors. So if you can, like, order the deck with, like, limited vendors, then do it that way, I guess. Hopefully. Anyway, yeah, for, for under 30 bucks, this is quite a deck. Alright, so part one, Agnes the Dragon's Lash, about the commander. So he is a very, again, I think we talked about this already, but yeah, having a tri-color commander that is able to be cast for one color, I don't think I've seen that whole lot of that. So I don't think it's unique, but it's pretty unusual. So highly useful. It allows you to really take advantage of like, in this we do want that treasure focus, and he's able to focus on red, which is very good with like, treasure uh, synergy so it's great for a, a great little combination of effects there high synergy cards okay trail tracker scout this is like every green deck i put this in if i can't if i can, if you can put trail tracker scout in a deck do it anyway one in a green for a one three mana dork tap for any color mana always a nice little thing Whenever you expend 8, that means spend 8 mana on spells. It does have to be on spells. I said it could be abilities before, and I was wrong. I was just wrong. Anyway. Return up to one permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So, again, one thing Jund is not very good at is uh, card draw. Green is probably the strongest card draw color in there. Or maybe black, actually, now that I'm thinking about it out loud. Who cares? Anyway. The point is, um, yeah, this is going to not be card draw. This is better than card draw. I think Recursion is basically just a better version of card draw. Because whatever is in the graveyard is probably what your opponents wanted to put in the graveyard. Getting it back to your hand and back to the battlefield, it's just going to be like, kind of, it's a, it's a bit salty, I think. Anyway, this one is so amazing. I gotta order more of these. Housing device. Okay, this is a weird one. So one and a red for this artifact, and whenever a dowsing device or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, up to one target creature you control gets plus one damage and haste until end of turn. Remember, even if it's temporary haste, it's still haste. You can put this on any creature, even creatures that were already on the battlefield, and then yeah, when they attack you get treasure. You automatically get a, tr a tap treasure, but still a treasure. Uh, so this get even it counts itself as well. This gets out of hand fast. 
So early game, this is great for giving you value. Uh, then, yeah, then transform dazzling device. If you control four or more artifacts, you're probably going to control four or more artifacts, right? Whew. So let's see what it tra transforms into. Geode Grotto. Okay. This is a land cave. I love me some caves lately. I did a video on caves as well. I think I can only put one link in per video, which unfortunately, but you should try to check out my uh, caves one as well. Anyway, until end for uh, you can tap for a red. Also, for two and a red, you can tap it until end of turn. Target creature gains haste, great, and gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Yeah, that goes into win con territory almost, right? You can turn that into a finisher at least pretty easily. Um, that's a whole lot of extra power, and it gives haste just to like you know, really rub it in, I guess. Um, ho, ho, ho. That's a crazy one on this deck. It's almost like the perfect artifact of the deck. Anyway, Fires of Yav Yavimaya. One red, green, and enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. Just giving all your creatures haste. Most of your creatures have haste anyway, but this is like any other ones that maybe don't. All covered. So, yeah... You can sacrifice it to give a creature plus two, plus two until end of turn. This can be very big. Remember, we've got lots of ways to get permanents back to your hand. So sacking this does not mean it's gone. There's also a lot of redundant effects where there's a lot of ways you can get haste for all of your creatures. You don't have to rely on this. So if you have this and another thing that does the same thing, might as well get a secondary use out of it and then pull it back out of your graveyard later to do it again. Um, just, uh, oy, oy, the sack option. Especially plus two doesn't sound like a lot, but again, we've got ways to give double strike as well. So that's gonna be plus four. If you're going for a commander damage type of thing, um, your commander starts, I believe, at a two, two? He'd be up to a six, or sorry, five, a four, four, which would be an eight, eight, right? So yeah, eight damage already is getting, uh, it's getting up there, at least. Okay, so part two, the plan. So what are our deck objectives, right? How do we win with this deck? That's what it's really all about. All right, so three-step plan as usual. I try to aim for a three, clear three or four-step plan. Ramp, haste, win con. I feel like even by these deck standards, I usually try to keep it simple. This is like screamingly obviously simple this might be the easiest to uh, pilot deck i've ever made for a budget no way ramp ogness hey your commander is definitely rampy bell tracker scout we already talked about you've got you've got uh three toughness mana dork really good start makes any color mana great also recursion insane especially on this deck because Making eight mana is not like something this is, deck is going to struggle to do, right? Spending eight mana is, yeah, we, we can get that done, I think. Again, it doesn't have to be mana on a spell, on an ability. Anyway, Sky Shroud Claim. This lets you go for four mana. It's a little more expensive than some, but you get two forests. And it just says forest, not basic land forest. That's what's really good about this. We do have dual, uh, uh, dual color forests, like mountain forest and I believe a swamp forest. You can go get those and throw them into the battlefield. So you've done your ramping and your mana fixing, and you're like all set pretty much. Osmium Confluence. All right, this is an interesting one I did on my cave episode and I mentioned earlier. Four, four, and a green. You can choose three, choose the same uh, mode more than once. Again, search your library for a cave. You may put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. We want to do that three times. We've got three caves in here. Not transforming caves, just regular caves. One of them being Pit of Offerings, where you get to basically graveyard hate someone. You get to take out three cards out of any graveyards you want. It doesn't even have to be the same graveyard. It could be different graveyards, and you can tap for any of that mana, any color mana of the exiled cards. Oh my gosh. Anyway. 
very easy to get your colors fixed there. And also to like upset other people's strategies. Um, oh. Also, you can destroy artifact, right? You can just like destroy three artifacts if you want instead. Um, I probably wouldn't, but if you need it, it's there. Port Hauler, R3 in the red. This is a vehicle. A 5-5 five, five with trample. Whenever it deals uh, combat down, shoot player, create that many treasure uh, to create a treasure token for each artifact they control. So if you're playing against uh, uh, someone who's doing like an artifact matters deck like my Sahili deck, I would be terrified if this hit the battlefield. Oh my gosh, this would be just absolutely like jaw dropping. Um, against the right deck, this is like just a nightmare to see. So haste now, cards of Yavimaya. I, I feel like I'm not saying it right, but okay. We talked about that one already. Flame Shadow Conjuring. Every time something enters the battlefield, you can pay one red, make a copy of it. The copy has haste, and um, yeah, exile at the beginning of the next hand step. Unfortunately, it is exile, but hey. Um, yeah, so remember, when it attacks, it's going to make a tap treasure token. So you could just like everything you copy, it costs you one red. It's kind of like putting one red uh, or putting one mana into it, converting it to a treasure. It's not even really uh, doing that. You know, it's not even really spending. It's more like changing it to a treasure that can be any color. So yeah, this could actually be quite useful, really. And we're going to have all that add extra synergy from having those artifacts, right? We're going to be able to like do more damage and have win cons and have all kinds of things. So this is just going to like get out of hand really quickly. Uh, sleeper, error weapon. We got two red green for a 3-3 flash with haste also. Creatures you control that enter the battlefield this turn have double strike. All of your creatures enter because they've got haste they can like attack right away this one give them double strike as well we also have ways to give them menace and death touch if you're attacking with only one you can have it get death touch as well um so just swing in with something like that is just gonna like first strike death touch is an amazing combination also haste menace is an amazing combination right you, they've got to use two creatures to block and you're gonna like with double strike, you have first strike and regular attack, so you're going to use your death touch to like take them both out right away. It's like super easy removal, really. Uh, and talk rumble fort, two in a red for this zero three. Actually, haven't seen this before. I should have put this in so many decks. Anyway, creatures you control have haste. Also, defender with reach is really nice, but creatures you control have haste. Just everything gets haste. A dowsing device. We talked about dowsing device already. Yeah, it is going to be granting haste on both sides. It can do it. This side, it will do it automatically just whenever uh, another artifact enters the battlefield. Um, so yeah, quite quite good. Yeah. Okay, win con. So we're getting into the main win con we want for this is to get a bunch of treasure and do a bunch of damage, right? But we can win other ways. For instance, commander damage. So your commander and then swashbuckler extraordinaire. Uh, yeah. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice one or more treasure tokens. When you do, uh, that many creatures, uh, target creatures, gain double strike until end of turn. So basically, you can attack with him. He'll make a treasure. You can sacrifice that treasure immediately. Give him double strike. Then yeah. Kessig Wolf Run. So for X and red green, you can tap it to give target creature gets plus X until en attack until end of turn and gains trample. So yeah, you can give them double strike and then trample and yeah, even if they put something in front of them, you can probably boost up his attack enough that he can like destroy that with the first attack and then yeah, just yeah, to carry over the damage. Um, very, very mean, but it'll get the job done, I think. Oh boy, will it ever. Oh, he's a 3-3. I said he was a 2-2 before. I was wrong. 3-3, okay. Alright. Okay, 
This is like a category of win con, not really a specific one. Even the pl plus to damage for uh, winning with him, you could do this with Cranial Ram as well. There's a lot of ways to give a damage boost in this deck. So yeah, it's not really limited to just that specific thing. But yeah, Cranial Ram. This is an equipment, so equipped creature gets plus X plus one, where X is equal to the number of artifacts you control. Great. Field Grotto, we talked about already. Bonus for artifacts control. Back Bolt. Does damage to target player equal to the number of artifacts you control for five, in, or sorry, four in red, five CMC. Adam Elite Sword Jack. I can't talk anymore. Three in a red for a four three. So when it enter, when it attacks, it deals damage equal to to, to play, uh, sorry to the player or planeswalker. It's attacking equal to the number of artifacts you control. So this automatically will do all the damage, and then it'll still assign combat damage as normal as normal. But, but, but I really can't talk anymore. How oh, good? Dark Steel Juggernaut. I love this card. Uh, five for a uh, question mark question mark. Or star star whatever you want to call it it's indestructible artifact creature its power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control and it attacks each combat if able it doesn't have to always attack i kind of like that because like since your commander is so integral to your deck it's going to be a major uh removal target here if they they're going to be like oh if i have selling some kind of exile thing you, they want to use it on Dark Steel Juggernaut instead of your commander. So it's kind of nice. It takes some of the heat off at least. Finale. Okay. So a finale of Eternity. You do need a total of 12 mana to make this work right, but I think we can do that. So destroy up to three target creature with toughness X or less. If X is 10 or more, return all creature cards to you from your graveyard to the battlefield. So again, this is about. You've had a couple of board wipes, and maybe your uh, graveyard's getting kind of stacked. This is when you come back with this. This is going to throw everything back into you into the battlefield from your graveyard. Again, you do need that 12 mana. Also, have something like Tuk Tuk Rumble Fort. Again, we have multiple things that give haste to everything. You don't need this specifically, but this is something that if it's in your graveyard, it's already done, right? Creatures you control have haste, so they're just going to have haste. Especially with Agent of the Iron Throne. Once again, doesn't need this to work. This is a benefit. Commander creatures you control have. When an artifact or a creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So you're going to sacrifice a bunch of treasure to use Finale of Eternity. Every treasure you sacrifice is going to deal one damage to each opponent. Each. You could turn that into like pretty easy win. Okay, so part three combos and tactics. This is where we look at mostly at the themes, right? How do we use the themes? What are we doing in the deck here? So, treasure. Really calling it a sub theme is almost not accurate, I feel like, but anyway. So, Mahadi Emporium Master 1. Black red for a 3-3 three, three. at the beginning of your, your end step. Target, uh, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. That is so huge with the, like, you're playing a very aggressive haste deck, right? So you want to just keep throwing creatures at them. And then those creatures that have haste, hopefully that's all of them. They're going to make a treasure as soon as they attack. And if they get wiped out when they attack, this is going to make another treasure. Your combat phase is just going to be like payday. Anyway. Reign of Riches. Oh. Three red red. So when it enters the battlefield, create two treasure tokens. Sure. Mm. The first spell you cast each turn that uses mana from a treasure has Cascade. So you can give anything Cascade. Again, you want to use it for something that... Cascade means that you get to like cast something for free. That is lower cost, basically, than the spell. So you want your big spell, use the treasure to cast it, and then, yeah, 
so you're going to exile cards to the top of your deck until you hit something that's a lower casting cost, a non-land that's a lower casting cost, and then cast that automatically. So this is just going to be a whole bunch of extra value on top of that, like extra value made from all the treasure tokens. Captain Lannery Storm for two and a red is a 2-2 two -two with haste. We like haste. So yeah, when she attacks, create a treasure token. That means two. She has haste also, right? So you're going to make two treasure tokens, and then if she, you know, get, dies and Mahadi is out, you're going to make a third treasure token from her attacking. Oh. And whenever you sacrifice a treasure, she gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. This could be so useful, right? Especially, like, if you're attacking and someone blocks, you can just, like, the block that looks like it's going to, like, just take her out, you can take out both. Or if someone lets her through, sacrifice a bunch of your treasures right away and just boost up her damage and make it into like taking them out of the game all of a sudden. Crime Novelist. Okay, whenever you sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one plus one counter on Crime Novelist and add red. Oh my gosh. Okay, so he gets plus one plus one. Sure. Why not? Makes an extra red. So you're... Sacrificing treasures is going to make two mana. One of them has to be red and one of any color. We mostly want red anyway, so that's fine. Two per treasure. Roxanne Starfall Savant. Alright, so this is a, a one I actually did a commander deck on, a budget deck. It's uh, I really like that one as well. Here she's in the 99 though, so three red green for a four three. And when she enters the battlefield, you create a meteorite that is a mana rock that can tap for any mana. Also, it does two damage when it enters. I guess the meteorite falls down and hits your opponent and then gives you mana. Is the idea? Whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, add one mana of any type that artifact token produced. So this is going to make an extra mana for every mana you make. Again, so if you have her and Crime Novelist out, each treasure token creates three mana. Also, the the uh, the token she creates creates two mana as well. So yeah, she costs five. She's immediately going to make uh, a, a token that will do two damage and then make you two mana. So she kind of costs three, really. And then on the next turn, it's like, well, she almost eliminates the cost. If you include, like, treasure and stuff like that, it just... Mm, oh boy. The facts entering. Okay, so Mirkwood Bats. I put this one first for good reason, because it's going to come up again. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. Again, a token. It doesn't say a creature token or an artifact token, just any token. So treasure, you do sacrifice treasure when you activate it. So that's going to deal one damage to each opponent. Uh, each opponent. Remember, each, not target opponent, each opponent. Ingenious Artillerist. A two and a red is a three, one, and whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, it deals that much damage to each opponent. So again, if you're making a bunch of artifacts, you're just dealing that much damage to... Um, yeah, it is each opponent again. So if both of these are out, Every time you make one treasure, it deals two damage as well. And you're going to make a lot of treasure. Oh boy. Reign of Riches. Okay, so I think we already talked about this. I feel like we did. Anyway, maybe not. Three red red. When it enters, you create two treasure tokens. Yeah, I definitely did talk about this already. And yeah. Make sure that your big spell you cast that turn is the first one you use treasure to cast. And then, yeah. It has Cascade, so it's just extra value. Alright, oh, well, I did just talked about that, right? Housing device, once again. Talked about this one as well, so yeah. I'm not gonna harp on it, but it's just uh, like the perfect artifact for this deck. Cut in stain. Keeper Aether Grid, first of all. So this is not actually on entering. This is just like entering. Uh, unfortunately, it has to be untapped, so your treasures that your commander makes come in tapped, which is not useful for this. 
uh, the ones that will enter like Bahadis will not enter tapped so yeah make sure you pay attention to which ones are entering tapped and which ones are not the ones that do not you can use this right away tap two untapped artifacts you control it deals one damage to any target so you're gonna have this pile of treasure tokens and if they're untapped um make sure you pay attention which ones are untapped because yeah when it's like the previous player's end step comes up you're like okay on your end step i'm just gonna tap all my treasures and do transform that into like 50 percent damage and then they're gonna untap right away you can still use them for mana um or for a win con or for you know whatever you want but yeah this just gives you something to do with your treasure that is not actually sacrificing them and taking them out of the battlefield this lets you just keep reusing them over and over again, artifact sacrifice so um we've got murkwood bats again remember entering and sacrifice so you're going to do this deals really every uh every token you create it deals one damage when you sack it it deals one damage so yeah this really deals two damage with per treasure token so yeah also, 4 mana for a 2-3 flyer is not bad. Nadir's Nightblade for 2 and a black. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Again, each opponent. So this is like getting really stacked up effects, right? Mirkwood Bats can deal 2, and then Nadir's Nightblade and maybe Ingenious Artillerist. If you have all of those, if you have those 3 on the battlefield, they're going to do 4 damage per treasure use create and sack um and you gain one life as well and you oh, obviously get a mana so or maybe multiple mana if you have you know like crime novelist or roxana agent of the iron throne so whenever an artifact or a creature or a creature enters you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield each opponent loses one life and once again each opponent loses one life but this is also for creatures as well so yeah, if they block your haster, you know, your haste creatures, well, hey, even more trouble for them. Mayhem Devil. So this is one red, uh, black red, sorry, for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. So it is a target, but it's any target. Also, it's anytime any player sacrifices a permanent. So it's going to trigger when you're sacrificing your uh, treasures or if anyone else sacrifices treasure or sacrifices anything else if they have food they sacrifice the food okay you get to do a one damage any player sacrificing is a, a, like damage for you now Ugh, crazy pretty master of review for a, a black and a red he's a one one sort of whenever you sacrifice a permanent again a permanent any treasure that counts Put a plus one plus one encounter on Jury Master of Review. So he's just going to stack up plus one plus one counters very quickly. When Jury dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This is getting into like finisher territory, right? If you've been, in, you know, if you've had on the, on the battlefield even for like two full turns, you can just swing with him, and if someone takes him out, you take them out. Oh boy. Spells, as I said before, X spells are very, very important just to like mostly guarantee you're getting your value from the treasure, right? Electro dominance for X red red deals X damage to any target, any target. So, this run really nice. is you may cast a spell with mana value X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So, this is going to do just a pile of damage. You can sacrifice however many treasures. Let's say 10 treasures. So you can deal 8 damage and cast any spell for 8 or less. That's any spell in your deck. You can automatically cast. Don't cast an another X spell though, because then X is 0. Remember, it will cast X for 0. It won't be like cast it for 8. It won't pretend it's the mana. Avalanche. I've got to actually order. Um, I don't think I have one of these. So it's X black, red, uh, green. So it is Jund. It deals X damage to target 
player or planeswalker and each creature that player or that planeswalker can uh, controller controls so you're going to do a whole bunch of damage to probably a player and this also going to deal that much damage to all of their creatures uh, not quite a board wipe but really like a selective board wipe so yeah you're pretty much just taking out everything one player controls and being like okay now um it's a sorcery speed unfortunately so yeah but you can really just get that value it's very easy if someone else is ahead cast it on them take out everything and then people can just like mob them no problem outrageous robbery and as I said before, is we've got a good amount of card draw in here, but this is to make sure you can just keep busting those spells out. So for X black black target opponent uh, exiles the X top cards of their library face down, you may look at those spells and cast them for as long as they remain uh, exiled. Sorry, you may play those cards, meaning you get to use the lands as well. If there's lands, you can uh, play their lands. If you cast a spell this way, you may uh, spend mana as though mana of any color to cast the type of spell. So you're just going to like start, you can take someone else's spells and just start, yeah, throwing them out whenever you want. Uh, super, super useful. Sorry, I shouldn't say throwing them out. That sounds like it's going to the garbage. I mean, using them whenever you want. So if you're like, if you're behind on card draw or you just got like an excessive amount of treasures, which is very possible. This is going to give you something to do with it. So kind of a double use there. Spiteful Bandit Tree. X red red for this enchantment this time. It enters the battlefield deals X damage to each creature. Including your own creatures. Keep in mind. So this is probably going to destroy your own creatures. This can be very useful. Especially with like finale of Revelation. You get your, or your graveyard all, all filled up. Then you bounce them all back basically destroying everyone else's stuff you bounce them all back and then you're going to just like use the fact that you have haste to win the game so yeah this is kind of a win con here as well whenever one or more creatures your opponent's control die you create a treasure token more treasure more always more their number is legion so x black 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 yeah anyway Create X, uh, tap 2-2 two, two Necron Warrior Creature Tokens, uh, then you gain life equal to the number of artifacts you control. Then you exile this. This you can also play from your graveyard. So if someone's forcing you to discard, discard this and still use it. Doesn't matter. It is a sorcery speed, unfortunately, but you create a huge amount of these Necron, these 2-2 two, two soldiers, and then you're going to gain life equal to your artifacts. This is if someone's got you, you know, you knocked you down a bit, you can immediately probably gain a pretty huge chunk of life, enough for you to stay in long enough to take the game. Especially with a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of token creatures that you can use. Hopefully with, they come in tapped, unfortunately, so hopefully you have them with, you've given them haste just so you can like make a bunch of treasure off of them as well. Remember that X is going to turn back into treasure for you which is basically like refunding your mana so yeah very nice little card in this deck removal manglehorn okay two and a green for a two two when it enters the battlefield you may destroy target artifact a creature that automatically destroys artifacts very nice artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped so you're just like everyone else you, you don't get to use artifacts right away you're going to slow them down a bit. Again, your deck is all about going really fast. You're making them go slower. So that's a nice combination. Cindervine. A great one here. This is actually recommended by uh, EDH on a budget. I, I really like this one. For red, green. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it, Cindervine deals one damage to that player. There's so many like Jeskai decks and things like that where this is going to like hit them hard. This is going to add up quickly. Again, non-creature spells does include a lot like artifacts or enchantments. It's not just your spell slinger decks that are going to get hurt by this. 
Um, and for one, you can sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Cindervine deals two damage to that permanent controller as well. Just for extra insult, it's going to do two damage on top of the removal. Untimely Malfunction. This is the one of my favorite new cards. I feel like it's going to go way up in price right away. I should have ordered it while it was under a dollar. It's already... It's, it's under two still. It's not going to stay there. For one or red, choose one. Destroy target artifact. Removal. Change target of target spell or ability with a single target. So any target or removal, you just be like, God, go over there. And then, yeah, one or two target creatures can't block this turn. Usually that's not super impressive with this deck because you're so aggressive. It's going to be really, really good. You get there like two good blockers and then mix it to the camp block and then just swing it with everything else. And then, yeah, it's going to be trouble, that's for sure. Pull a breach for two mana, destroy, uh, choose one, destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment or both. Destroy an enchantment and an artifact for two mana, one mana each, basically. In commander, you're going to be able to use it. Chaos Warp, which I feel like I don't need to explain, but it's an instant for two in the red. And yeah, you're going to take their card off the battlefield and put something else on. Probably not as useful. You're going to target their most useful thing and make them put... They're going to put something else in there that's probably not nearly as good. Uh, yeah. Again, sorry, the owner of this target permanent shuffles it into the his or her library and reveals the top card of their library. If it is a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. So there's a chance if it's an instant or sorcery, just go to the graveyard. It doesn't do anything. Card draw. All right. Acolyte hybrid. Two and a red for a 2 2. It has heavy rock cutter. Whenever it attacks, destroy up to one target artifact. If an artifact is destroyed this way, its controller draws a card. So basically, target your own treasures. Attack with this. He'll probably have haste from something. And then, yeah, he's going to create a treasure. And you can blow up a treasure. And really, you won't even be behind. And you're going to draw a card for blowing up your own treasure. Morbid Opportunist. One of my favorites. For two and a black, whenever one or more creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Remember, each turn, not each round. So on your turn, on your opponent's turn, your next opponent's turn, the next, this can draw four. Very likely, a lot of games it will draw four every uh, every round. This is probably the majority of the card draw you need in the game. And Arna, the Fist of Kelp. So one black, red, red. Whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card if it was attacking. Otherwise, she deals one damage to each opponent. I love this because, like, yeah, you've got your haste, and if someone does a board wipe, okay, well, they're going to take a whole bunch of damage because you're, they're taking your creatures out without it being in combat. And if it is in combat, they're probably creating a treasure, and then, yeah, you're going to get to draw a card as well, just creating more value from that excessive combat damage. Barb Servitor. Ah, another one I just love. Uh, three in a black. One, one, indestructible. I, it is nighttime, I, so I've got my 20s tea. I'm happy. English breakfast, if you're wondering. But anyway. So whenever it deals combat to shoot player, draw a card and lose one life. So that's nice. And yeah, when it enters the battlefield, suspect it. That means it basically can't block, right? It has menace and it can't block, which is a nice combination. You're probably going to give it haste as well, right? And whenever it is dealt damage, target opponent loses that much life. So all the damage dealt to it is just going to become like... It's just going to be damage done to the opponent. Oh, boy. Oh. Bitter Reunion. Okay, so this is an enchantment. It really works more like an instant in a lot of ways, or a, a non-permanent, I should say. 
you know, maybe a sorcery is better in comparison. So for one or red, when it enters the battlefield, you may discard a card if you do draw two cards. Discard one, draw two, good deal. Also for one mana, you can sacrifice it. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. What's really an advantage about this is that you can do that. You can give everything haste, make a bunch of treasure, and then yeah, you can probably uh, expend eight and then pull it back out of the graveyard and back to your hand to play it again and then do the card draw and then get your yeah get your haste all over again so this is going to be very very useful so this has been Agnes the dragon slash i hope you guys liked it i really liked building this one it was an interesting one anyway take it easy